Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming and Dragon's Dogma 2. Today, we're talking about these little things, port crystals, which allow you to set up a direct teleportation location. There's actually two kinds. There's the permanent ones, which are not so many in number. There's two of them, at least only two until you unlock the remaining three towards the end of the game. So we have the portable versions to rely on instead, which let us plonk these down wherever we like. And from then on, we can use one fairy stone to instantly return to it. Pretty incredible and extremely helpful in a game as big as this with intention limited travel options. There's definitely been a lot of drama around the microtransactions of the game, which, yep, should not be in the game. But you do not need to buy a single one of these. There's a possible six you can get in the game for completely free on top of the potential permanent five. That's 11 locations you can teleport to, six of them you can move around a place where you want. Basically, it means you should never, ever consider buying one, and I strongly suggest you do not do that. So here are the six portable port crystal locations and what I suggest you do with them. Our first port crystal option will be with this guy, an elf, Glindwyr. You'll first meet this guy actually in Vernworth, standing right in front of the weapon vendor in the market area. If you speak with him, you'll realize that he's really admiring human bows and he would love one. Now, obviously you can turn around and just buy one and give him one, but if you do have a bow lying around from where you found one, you could give him one. For example, if you go over to the ox cart, the main entrance of the town, on your left as you're gonna exit, there's actually a kind of stairway up to a guard house room. In there, there's a bit of gold in a chest and hey there's a fluted bow which could be an option and then you'd save some money in any case give the guy a bow and then he'll ask you to go meet him and help him sort of learn archery to do that you will need to swap to the archer vocation or i guess technically you could be a warfarer but that's pretty late game so that you can fire like a single shot at a target for him it's not that big of a deal you just run over there as an archer do it and then you can change vocation you could even do it in the elf village which is just the north of that location in any case you meet him where he's placed the marker you show him how to shoot one of the targets he finds all the information he needs from that if we return to vernwood We'll meet him again there. This time he's going to tell you that he's going to take his archery trial and he wants you to be there for it. So agree and go meet him in the woods again to the north where he will lead you to the elf village. He'll lead you straight to the leader of the elf village which happens to be his dad and you find that the trial is off because an ogre has kidnapped the daughter of the leader of the village so we need to go save her. It's a nearby cave marked on your map. You go in there, you defeat the ogre, you save the sister and that really is just it. You get a pretty good bow. The leader of the elf village will really like you so he'll teach you the archer master teaching and also in that moment right outside the cave he'll give you a port crystal and so that's probably the easiest one you can get in terms of side quest it's pretty straightforward if we're looking at the sacred arbor the elf town the next one is actually not far away and you can go pick it up if we work our way out of the malachite forest and head southwest you're gonna see the misty marches here just under that i have a little icon it's the forest griffin's nest which is the location of our next port crystal there's a few ways you can get there you could literally go through the misty marches and go to the south side and climb up it is a physical location that you can go to at any time but obviously it's tucked away and that can be a bit awkward to actually get to instead what you can do is just find a griffin in the area if you encounter a griffin in the general area of this location during the fight you can run up and climb on it there's a high chance that the griffin will try to run away during the fight and even more so if you're actually stood on it, it would seem it'll just start flying away with you on the back and it will lead you to a nearby nest this can be done in any location where the griffins are and usually the rods are pretty damn good but particularly this forest griffin one will lead you straight to a nest with the port crystal so as soon as you land you can run up and grab it or defeat the griffin and do it when it's safe but no side quest needed at all you just need to get to the location and it'll cost you nothing Next up, we have a main quest reward here with Captain Brandt. This is the reward after completing the quest Feast of Deception. And without any major spoilers, this is the quest that is before when you get the Beastron Border Entry Permit. As you follow the main quest, you need to do a bunch of different things in Vernworth. When you've done enough of these, you can go speak with Captain Brent again, and he'll tell you that it's time to go to the Coronation and kind of tackle the main issue of the story. It doesn't quite go to plan, and so Captain Brandt needs to kind of work out an alternative solution. His solution is for you to go to the desert city and that's why he gives you the Beastron border entry permit to do so. To actually do the feast 
Feast of Deception though and have all that kind of take place, you will first need some courtly clothes. You can find some for free in the Vernworth Castle. It's in the guest room above the main entrance as you go in and there's just a chest in there that you can open. This is instead of buying them for an insane price, so well worth it. Once equipped, you can speak with Brant to actually attend the coronation and progress the main story. Upon completion, you'll be given a port crystal so that you can travel around with that in mind before then discussing the whole desert region with him. So that is three port crystals that you can get for completely free, no issue. However, for the next three, it's a bit more complicated. First up, we have the Dragon Forged NPC here. Quite an interesting character, a lot of lore involved, and obviously I'll try to avoid spoiling anything. But you can just sort of visit him whenever you want to. He's located here at the Bay Wayward Shrine. You can get there easily from Back Batal by heading to the northeast section and then heading north following the road. And as you continue up north, you veer down to the east to go down to the coast and then cross the coastline. And then that's it. You're at the cave. You can enter and speak with him. But his main currency is in fact this, Worm's Life Crystal, the crystallized blood of a draconic creature. As the Dragonforge will tell you, this comes from different sources. Any drake, whether that's lesser or a major dragon, will drop this. And so you can get quite a lot of it throughout just exploring the world. Drakes will challenge you in different locations, and there are quite important lore characters as well. One of the things that the Dragonforge sells though, of course, is a port crystal for 20 Worm's Life Crystals. Technically, you only need 15 because there are five laying here in the cave as you come here for the first time, so you probably need to defeat a couple drakes. We're planning on doing a video kind of covering these guys, but there is one here on this marker on the northwest section of the desert. You can find one here at the northern half ruins just outside of half. There's also one on the road right here, which is just east of the strange corridor. And if I zoom out on the location for you, this is the spot. But also, the Dragonforge does sell some really useful stuff and is the guy you need to go to get the fourth upgrade for your equipment, so very worth it to get these materials. But now, it's time to talk about the fifth and potential sixth port crystal reward. This is at the Sphinx Trial, which is basically an optional major character that has some serious rewards. I mean, you can get over 100,000 gold from this, loads of unique items, including not one, but two port crystals if you choose that. So let me explain. To find the Sphinx, you need to come here to the Mountain Shrine. What that really means is you need to come here to the ancient battleground, which is just northeast of the Checkpoint Rest Town. As you work your way into this ruined fortress, you'll climb up to this area. Above it, via a ladder, is a cavern. You pass through that, and it brings you all the way to the right here, which brings you to the shrine. If you want a full guide to the Sphinx, every detail and not just that the easiest fastest solution to all of the riddles I have a video on the channel right now for exactly that but for the purpose of this video you need to complete the second riddle on the list which is riddle of madness to earn the first port crystal reward in short the riddle of madness is basically bringing a beloved to the Sphinx. This could be a character that you've got high affinity for, or it could literally be all three of your pawns slapped on the pedestal, which is what I did, because yeah, they are really important to you. With that riddle complete though, you'll get the port crystal. So that's number five. But port crystal number six is also here. The fourth riddle is riddle of conviction. And the idea here is to give up something of high value to never get back. The trick in reality is that they don't actually take whatever you give them. You get to keep the original item and then a new copy of the item is generated as the reward for that riddle. So if you choose to give the Sphinx a port crystal, well then you will keep the original one and duplicate spawn a second one, creating a sixth potential port crystal in the game. This is what I did because I think they're very valuable. And so that's how you get all six port crystals. Where should you actually put these? Well, as I said, there is already a port crystal here in Vernworth. You just need to interact with it as the permanent stone. And there's also one down here in the Harv village. But as I said, there's going to be three more that spawn in as you get towards the end of the game if you're following the right storyline. But in the meantime, for most of the game, that's it. Just those two. What I would recommend is not picking a place that has an ox cart route. For example, we have an ox cart station in North Vernworth. That goes all the way to Melv. So there's no reason having a port crystal setup in Melv since you have a fast travel option there already. Further, there's another ox cart station here that goes west. This brings you all the way to the checkpoint town, the western point of the map. So again, no point having one here. There is even on the other side of the border, another ox cart station. That'll bring you to the city of Bak Batal. But despite that, I actually have 
a port crystal set up there anyway. That's because it's so far away from everything. I could be in the middle of the wilderness. I don't really want to have to walk to some ox cart station and take three trips to get here since the south side of the map is so important and you will be coming here so many times. So I would actually recommend you set one up here. Further, I've also got one set up at the Sacred Arbor, the elf town, since this is the northern section of the map and there are no ox cart options. So those two are ones that I would kind of strongly suggest to you. Another one I would strongly suggest is this one down in the southern volcanic island. Despite the fact that there's very clearly a bridge that leads across here going to back Batal, part of the main story is a locked gate that will not let you progress into the city. Until you progress the main story far enough, this route is not an option. So you are forced to go through the desert through the south side and work your way through here, down through the grotto here, which is actually a maze cave, through here and all the way finally to the camp. As it is a later game area, the armory offers some incredibly high quality equipment. So coming here is very valuable. And so this is where I'd expect you to put your third port crystal as a standard option. After that, it's more specifically tied to what you're doing right now, say quest related options. The Sphinx trials are a great example of that. They have a lot of back and forth going on there. In the riddles, you'll need to go find someone and bring them to the Sphinx. Instead of doing that, you can actually teleport to a location with a fairy stone while grabbing and carrying someone. If you run up and grab them and then use that fairy stone, you'll bring them with you, which can be a great way to overcome the kind of difficult parts of say those riddles. So with any quest that requires you to go back there, say multiple times, I think it's a no brainer to drop a port crystal there. It can save you a lot of time. And then when you're done in that area, you can still pick up the port crystal. It's not like it's a permanent thing, but yeah, there you have it. Those are the locations of the port crystals and the details around it. With the fact that you can purchase one with the microtransaction being a thing, we just wanted to make a video that's basically don't do that. Here's how you can get more than you're ever gonna need. If you guys have any extra advice or details around the topic to help people out, then drop it in the comments. But for now, I hope the video helped you. And until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.